parents were grieving the loss of their six-month-old baby girl, when suddenly a crow flew into the church and landed on top of the baby's coffin. What happened next? Left everyone at the wake speechless. The day was covered by a curtain of gray clouds, giving the room a dark atmosphere that matched the melancholy tone of the funeral. Ingrid and Cedric, the distraught parents, were a young couple who could barely stand in front of the small white coffin that housed their little girl, Anne, just six months old. The heavy silence was broken only by the muffled sound of sobs and murmurs from those present, who came forward to offer their respects in the hope of bringing a little comfort to the couple. There are no words that can ease a loss like that, dear, murmured an elderly woman, squeezing the poor mother's hand gently. The father received a silent hug from a close friend, whose eyes were also watering. Among those present, comments about the injustice of life and the fragility of human existence were shared in trembling whispers. The priest, a figure of serenity in the midst of sadness, was preparing to begin the farewell mass. We are gathered here to celebrate Anne's life, however brief it may have been, and to find comfort in faith in the face of this immeasurable loss. He began, his voice firm but filled with empathy. However, it was then that, unexpectedly, something happened that completely changed the rhythm of that melancholy event. Out of nowhere, a crow swooped into the church, flying low over the pews before landing, with almost supernatural grace, on the little girl's coffin. A murmur of surprise went through the church, and all eyes turned to the bird. The crow, with its shiny black feathers, seemed to be watching those present, a striking contrast to the purity of the white coffin. A crow inside the church, whispered someone, their voice laden with superstition. Crows were often associated with omens and mysteries, and its presence there, at that moment of deep mourning, was unsettling. Get it out of there! Ingrid, wiping away a tear, looked at the crow and could only cry, imagining all sorts of bad things that could come from that sign and looking for some meaning in that apparition. Cedric put his arm around her, trying to offer some protection from the pain and the inexplicable as other people got up to scare the animal away. But no one was prepared for what would happen next. The atmosphere of mourning and melancholy was abruptly transformed by the presence of the crow and what it did. Curiosity about its presence and the implications of its landing on the girl's coffin filled the hearts of those present with a mixture of awe and fascination. But before we get any further, let's talk a little about how it all happened. In the quiet town of Hope, a young couple, Ingrid and Cedric, moved there full of dreams and, to live up to the town's name, a lot of hope. Newly married and overflowing with love for each other, they shared a common desire to start a family. But this dream seemed far away as they were having trouble conceiving. The days turned into months, and the months into two years, with each failed attempt bringing more discouragement than the last. But they refused to give up, persisting through treatments and appointments, until finally they received the news they had been waiting for. Ingrid was pregnant. The couple's joy was palpable, lighting up their faces with a glow not seen for years. They began to lovingly prepare the baby's room, painting the walls a soft yellow, setting up the crib and decorating the room with stuffed animals and small furniture. It was the beginning of a new chapter in their lives, and they wanted everything to be perfect. In the midst of the preparations, they were surprised by the generosity of a neighbor, Ms. Rose, a kind elderly lady who lived next door. She was a retired midwife who soon became a constant figure in the Coopley's lives, offering not only advice and emotional support, but also helping with practical items. Once. Her husband lost his job, and they were very poorly off financially. The old lady knew many people from local non-governmental organizations, and took it upon herself to bring clothes, diapers, and everything a baby might need, knowing that Ingrid and Cedric had limited resources. You don't have to worry about anything, the old woman said with a warm smile. I have friends who can help. This baby will be blessed by the whole community. And so it was. Ms. Rose, with her network of contacts and generous heart, became a borrowed grandmother for the baby who was yet to come, as they found out it would be a girl. The woman, in particular, became attached to her, finding in her a mother figure who guided her through the challenges of pregnancy. I don't know what we'd do without you, Ingrid said one day, holding the old lady's hands between hers. You're an angel sent to us. The day of the birth came sooner than expected, but Ms. Rose was there, ready to help. The mother insisted that she wanted to give birth at home, wishing that the midwife who had been so supportive would be by her side at this crucial moment. 
the house was filled with expectation and love when the labor pains began. Cedric, anxious but trying to remain calm, caressed his wife while Ms. Rose prepared everything with expert hands. When Anne finally arrived in the world, her parents were overjoyed. The little baby was the embodiment of their hopes and dreams, a miracle they could hardly believe was real. The baby's first cries filled the room, like a sound sweeter than any song. However, in the midst of the joy and celebration, Ms. Rose discovered something that made time stand still. What was supposed to be the start of a life full of happiness and love suddenly turned into something that neither of them could have anticipated. They discovered something terrible. After Anne's birth, what was supposed to be a moment of pure happiness quickly turned into a nightmare for Ingrid and Cedric, because the baby was diagnosed with a serious congenital malformation in her brain, which the old lady saw right away, as her many experiences of seeing babies born alerted her the moment she laid eyes on the little girl. This news made the parents' hearts drop in despair. They rushed her to hospital, where the baby was immediately placed in an incubator. The parents' eyes, filled with tears, could not turn away from their daughter, whose fragility was now highlighted by Tubies and Machinas. How can this be happening? said Ingrid, looking through the glass that separated Anne from the rest of the world. She's so small, so innocent. Cedric, trying to be the rock his family needed, wrapped Ingrid in his arms, but his voice trembled when he spoke. We'll get through this together, my love. Anne is strong. She'll get through it. But the agonizing days turned into months with no significant improvement in the little one's condition. Ms. Rose, the midwife who had become such an important part of their lives, visited them frequently, sitting beside the anguished parents, holding their hands and with her own tears mingling with theirs. I pray for her every day, she said, her voice breaking with emotion. Anne is a blessing to us all. The surrounding community also mobilized, offering prayers and support. The collective force of love and faith seemed to form a shield around little Anne, but unfortunately, her condition remained unchanged. She didn't react, trapped in her own world, unable to connect with those who loved her so much. For Ingrid and Cedric, each day was an eternity of pain and hope. They barely left the side of the incubator, whispering words of love and encouragement to the little baby, wishing she could feel their presence and find the strength to fight. Then, just when the situation seemed unbearable, another devastating blow came. Ms. Rose, who had been their rock during this turmoil, ended up passing away peacefully in her sleep. At the age of 87, she was gone, leaving a huge void in the hearts of all who knew her. The news deeply shook the couple, who felt completely alone on their dark journey. She had been more than a neighbor or a midwife. She was part of their family, a mother, a friend, a light during their darkest moments. How are we going to deal with this without her? Ingrid lamented, feeling more lost than ever. She believed in our Anne. She's still with us, love. She'll always be with us. Her husband tried to comfort her, even though his own heart was breaking. And so, a few weeks later, despite incessant prayers and the hope that refused to die, poor baby Anne couldn't overcome the challenges she was facing either. At six months old, after a struggle that seemed to have consumed all the energy in her young heart, the baby passed away leaving her parents in a world that now seemed empty and gray. On the day of Anne's funeral, the sky was tinged gray and seemed to reflect the pain of their hearts. Friends, family, and acquaintances from the community gathered in the small church, each carrying a weight of sadness. Delicate flowers adorned the baby's white coffin, a simple tribute to the innocence and briefness of her life. The atmosphere was saturated with a heavy silence punctuated only by muffled sobs and the sound of footsteps of those arriving to pay their last respects. Ingrid and Cedric stood together, holding hands, in a state of grief that words could not describe. Compassionate glances were directed at them, while those present lined up to offer their condolences, and just as the priest, standing next to the coffin, began the farewell mass, seeking words of consolation and faith to ease the suffering of those mourning the loss of the little girl, there was that incident. The unexpected happened, turning the moment of mourning into one of bewilderment and amazement. The crow, with its feathers as black as the starless night, flew in through the open church window and, with surprising grace, landed on the baby's coffin. A murmur of shock and confusion quickly spread through the church. Some people made the sign of the cross, others muttered prayers, while some stood up, trying to scare the bird away. But before anyone could touch it, the crow opened its beak 
and, to everyone's amazement, began to make sounds that, incredibly, formed understandable words. Poor Anne. Poor thing. The crow's voice was deep and melancholy, and the silence that followed was absolute. Everyone in the church stood still, stunned by the phenomenon before their eyes. Is he talking? Nobody could believe it. The crow didn't stop there and said something that completely changed the lives of those poor, desolate parents. Poor thing. But that's okay. At least she's going to heaven. There won't be any more pain or suffering for her there. He continued, his strangely comforting voice echoing off the walls of that sacred place. When Ingrid and Cedric heard these words, they felt a wave of indescribable emotion. They both fell to their knees, and tears flowed freely down their faces, but no longer of despair, but of relief mixed with bittersweet pain. The crow's words somehow brought unexpected comfort to their hearts. Without notice, the crow simply spread its wings and, with a silent flight, left the church, disappearing into the immensity of the gray sky. A reverent silence overtook the place, as everyone was still processing the supernatural event they had just witnessed. The couple, still holding hands, found the strength in the bird's words to accept their daughter's departure. She's in heaven now, love, said Cedric, his voice laced with emotion. She's not suffering anymore. Our little girl is happy now, with God. The mother said, with a sad smile lighting up her face for the first time since the loss. They knew in their hearts that Anne was in a better place, free from any suffering. And this belief would help them find peace in the midst of the storm of their sadness. But the funniest and most curious thing was that the mystery of the crow that spoke during the baby's wake, although it seemed to be shrouded in an aura of the supernatural and mystical, had a much more earthly explanation than one might imagine. Even so, it was no less extraordinary. It turns out that, unknown to everyone in the town, Ms. Rose, the beloved midwife and neighbor who had touched so many lives with her kindness, had an unusual companion, a pet crow named Rick. This fact was a closely guarded secret, as Rick was rarely seen outside the old lady's house, and she, in turn, never mentioned her peculiar choice of company. Rick was no ordinary crow. He possessed remarkable intelligence a well-known characteristic of his species, but with a special ability to imitate sounds and words that he heard frequently. During the long hours she spent alone, the old lady found comfort in Rick's presence, talking to him about her day, her thoughts, and about the tragic situation of little Anne. Oh, Rick, poor Anne, poor thing. Ms. Rose used to say, sighing deeply as she shared her worries and sadness with the bird. Rick, with his attentive eyes, watched and listened, capturing the nuances of his owner's voice, marked by compassion and sadness. Ms. Rose had accepted Anne's fate, recognizing the seriousness of her condition. But it's okay, at least she's going to heaven. There won't be any more pain or suffering for her. She used to say, trying to find some consolation in the belief in a better fate for the child. When the old lady died, Rick's existence came to light in an unexpected way. The elderly woman's son, who had always been distant and uninterested in his mother's life, showed up at the house to organize her belongings with the intention of selling the property. When he found the crow there, he reacted indifferently, scaring it away without realizing the special connection it had with Ms. Rose. Get out, crow, get out! He ordered, without a hint of sentimentality, and threw the poor animal out of the house. Away from his home, Rick flew off aimlessly. However, at that very moment, the baby's wake was taking place. And so, perhaps guided by fate or by an invisible connection, he ended up going to the church and climbing in through the window. When he landed on the girl's coffin, the crow saw those expressions of sadness and said the words he had heard so many times from his owner. Rick not only surprised everyone with his skill, but also brought a moment of comfort and reflection to the grieving hearts of the poor parents. The crow's words were an echo of Ms. Rose's compassion, words that he had engraved in his memory and chose to share at that moment of deep sadness. It could be that he recognized the look on the old lady's face when she lamented the baby's situation and, seeing the same sadness on those people's faces, remembered the words. After his departure, Rick flew away and was never seen again. But the impact of what he said remained, one last gift from Ms. Rose, through Rick, to a couple who had lost so much. The story of the crow who spoke during a child's wake quickly spread through the town,
becoming a legend that touched the hearts of all who heard it. For many, the event was interpreted as a miracle, a message from beyond that had been sent to comfort Ingrid and Cedric, letting them know that their little Anne was well, in a place without pain or suffering. This interpretation brought a new sense of peace and acceptance, not only to the grieving parents, but also to the community that had shared their pain. Over time, life took its course for the young couple. Although they would never forget their tiny firstborn, they found the strength to carry on and were eventually blessed with more children. The family grew, enriched by the love and memory of those they had lost. The siblings grew up knowing the story of their older sister and the miraculous crow, a narrative that connected them to her in a deep and meaningful way. The couple built a beautiful life together, rooted in love, resilience, and the ability to find miracles in the most unusual places. And of course, they never forgot the old lady who was an angel in their lives. One of their daughters was even named after her, Rose. And so the legend of the crow served to remind everyone that sometimes things aren't even mystical, but they are enough to change someone's heart or change their life. It was a story that spoke of pain, but also of healing, of loss, and of eternal love. And for Ingrid, Cedric, and their children, it was a story of how, even in the darkest moments, you can find light, hope, and a way forward. And if you liked this story, I'm sure the next video that pops up on your screen will move you too. Don't forget to subscribe, give us a thumbs up, and activate the notification bell so you don't miss any of our upcoming videos. See you in the next heartwarming story.